I'm Scott Allen Miller. It is the 3rd of July, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Leon, Nicaragua. And today we are heading out and we are going to be looking at a house in the Barrio of Guadalupe, which is not where I am filming right at this particular moment because I did not have time to record the intro while I was out there and I have not had a chance to get back because the week has been so busy. But we're gonna be heading out there. We have a good size house, something very different and pretty surprising that we went out to see. We're gonna be bringing that to you right after the bump. It has been a while since I went out and did some barrio walks for you guys in the barrio of Guadalupe, but I am in the Guadalupe area all of the time because it's the uh, barrio that we drive through on the south side of the city in order to go from areas like Sutiava on the west uh, towards Managua, or if we're gonna go to Colonia Universidad or anything like that. So in the recent past, I've done a number of videos on Fundesi. Fundesi directly touches Guadalupe to the east. And I've done a number of videos on Colonia Universidad or Universitaria. Uh, that region touches Fundesi and kind of borders uh, Guadalupe a little bit on its southwest corner. So I've been doing a number pretty close to Guadalupe and I've done a lot of videos in and around Guadalupe uh, last year if you're looking at any videos that are shot uh, in La Borio where we used to live that is uh, directly north of Guadalupe Guadalupe is the south side of the river La Borio is the north and uh, I have a number of Guadalupe videos themselves. So go check those out if you wanna see a whole bunch about Guadalupe and I plan to go do more Guadalupe really soon just because it's one of the biggest barrios and honestly, it is one of my favorite simply because it has some of the, what I call the deepest culture in Leon. It's one of the most important barrios. It has just so much going on. Um, and I know on one of the videos that I did there, and I did some, Guadalupe is one of the ones where my daughter Liesl has gone out and done photo walks with me around Guadalupe. And uh, any of the time that we did the cemetery videos, that is Guadalupe as well. You can see the flies here. It is fly season. They don't bite or anything. They just, Rah, they get in your face. And uh, uh, so, so we've, we've filmed a lot of episodes. We've probably done more than 30 episodes in Guadalupe uh, and more than twice that many uh, in La Borio directly bordering it. So you should be able to get a pretty good idea of the barrio. I will throw up a map though, so that you can see the region considered Guadalupe because it's a very large region. It's one of the oldest parts of the city. Uh, it is centered around the sanctuary Guadalupe, which is a beautiful church and it is uh, encircled by restaurants. It's got street food and regular restaurants um, all the way around it in a major school and it's a major church. Uh, it's a beautiful area and I love that it's some of the best urban culture in the city. It's, it's one of the most unique places you'll find in Leon and it's one of those barrios where it's incredibly accessible and yet it really has no foreigners I'm sure there's a few right but extremely extremely few it's a giant barrio uh, and you can get lost in there and and you can really feel a part of Leonese culture Nicaraguan culture while being honestly walking distance to downtown at all times most of Guadalupe is only a five or ten minute walk from the Basilica so if if you want to go to the restaurant district all those things from Guadalupe it's super easy but Guadalupe is this south barrio that is generally quite affordable and really interesting um, and some people do consider it a little bit less safe remember everything's safe in Nicaragua in general and Leon is super safe so that Guadalupe is a little bit less safe in Leon if that's even true uh, it's still incredibly safe and that's not a reason to avoid it but if you're looking for like gated communities and that kind of stuff it's gonna be pretty hard to find anything like that down there so I think it presents a pretty reasonable option for people, um, but one that is essentially always overlooked and no one is talking about, no one is really uh, having on the map, and yet it could be, it offers a lot of unique housing, a pretty interesting location, really well situated and extremely affordable. 
Besides being incredibly affordable, Guadalupe also benefits from having really great access to much of the city. If you're looking to get to Sutiava or Laborio or downtown, or you need to head out towards Managua, Guadalupe sits on that side of the city and makes it very easy to access all of those things directly from your own barrio. So it's a very convenient place to potentially live because <clears throat> almost all expats are going to be going to one of those areas, either the downtown shopping and restaurants or out to the beach or heading out to the capital or the airport, uh, unless they're just staying home. And Guadalupe, while it doesn't have any of the restaurants that people know, that people talk about, it is full of small local restaurants. It has small local grocery stores and markets and all those kinds of things. So it's very much a livable barrio where it's pretty easy to stay and never really need to go out to other barrios or to go to downtown, uh, unless you, of course, are going to like fancy restaurants or big events, things like that. So it's it presents a pretty good living opportunity, but that's enough talking about this barrio. It is one of my favorites. It's up there with uh, with Sutiava for me uh, because of many of the same reasons. And it just presents a really good opportunity, I think, for expats, but it's certainly less on the map. And, and Sutiava is awfully not on the map. Both of these are uh, pretty unique locations for an expat to consider. But with that, let's just show this house because I think you're going to be surprised. We certainly were by how beautiful this house was uh, and, and where it was hidden in the neighborhood, um, but, but pretty easy to get around and deal with. And, and you're gonna love what you can get for the price out here in Guadalupe. Let's get to the house. We're on the street in front of the house. We're standing right at the house here. This is a pretty quiet, unassuming street in the middle of Guadalupe. It's an attractive spot, pretty decent access to everything, but a little bit out of the way, which can be handy. This is the front little patio area, which is pretty nice. This is a beautiful patio, lots of light. It does have barbed wire because you're right on the street, so you need a little bit of protection. People would just hop the walls, obviously, uh, if they could. You got nice plants. There's a good spot here. You could potentially have chairs, tables, uh, or whatever. It's a nice little space. But the real house here, this is about being inside this is a grand space. Check out this grand salon. You've got this big opening up front. You've got moderately high ceilings. You have the, uh, the, the formal parlor over here on what is the right with its own windows. We have the, uh, this is the last bedroom. So this is a little bit odd to start with. And it's weird that it's at the front of the house. This is a tiny bedroom and it's bathroom. It does have its own bathroom, but its sink is out in the room. Certainly weird. All the rooms have windows into the Grand Salon, which is actually pretty cool. I like that style a lot, but it lacks a lot of outdoor windows. I don't like that. I prefer when you get both, obviously, but this has kind of a hotel feeling. It could be easily converted to a hotel because of this design. Just it would be an incredibly small one. Good sized bathrooms, even in this uh, uh, fourth bedroom. Really, I would consider that more likely to be an office. I say that a lot, but this is one where it's certainly able to be a bedroom, but could be a really great office as well. That big opening on the left, this is the garage. So this is common in Nicaraguan homes, but you don't always see them quite like this. Uh, that is the garage door right there. Generally, you'd be expected to put your car in that darker area. You could fit two cars in here if you needed to, but this is the formal dining room in front of the cars. You might wanna put up some kind of barrier there. We're looking into the kitchen. We're standing in what is expected to be the dining room right now. It's not huge, but it's pretty nice. Notice that it has big open doors, big open spaces everywhere. And the kitchen is a really good size. I mean, this is this is a huge kitchen and a good size dining room. Lots of windows between the rooms, lots of giant openings into the salon, a lot of doorways, a lot of moving around. This kitchen would handle quite a bit of cooking and, and work going on. And you have kind of a, a spot to serve, kind of a breakfast buffet there or for serving uh, into the dining room. Really nice combination of space. We have one of the bedrooms here over on this side. We have a Jack and Jill set up, but these are big rooms. They do not have built-ins though. Typically, we're gonna see built-ins in this kind of house. In this one, we don't, so just be aware that that's something that's missing. You'll have to bring your own closet space. We have these cool windows into the salon. You will definitely want to put in curtains or you're gonna have a serious privacy problem in these bedrooms. But it is neat that the bedrooms can look out into the living room. Very different living style. 
This is an excellent Jack and Jill bathroom for these two big bedrooms over here. Very large. Nothing fancy, but you have lots of space to decorate however you like, modify it in whatever way. And the other Jack and Jill bedroom, just as big as the other. Color's a little bit weird. You probably want to repaint, uh, brighten that up potentially a little bit, its own window into the house. Of course, you could add air conditioning to any of these rooms, but none is included at this time. We're gonna cross the hall here, show you the other side. That is the, the kitchen, just a little bit to the left. And this space, I honestly don't know what the expectation is. Here, we'll see the, the kitchen so you can see where we are in the house. This is a very large room. This could be uh, made into the dining room. You could use that other space for something else, but it's a very big room that is not really clearly designated. But this is the master bedroom, way bigger than the, the Jack and Jill's or the one in the front. This one has a walk-in closet. This one has a big window into the salon and a window outside. Its bathroom also has a, an outside window in a different direction, which you can just see there for a moment. This is the walk-in closet. It's not huge, but it is very large for a closet in Nicaragua. You rarely see walk-ins, so that is excellent. See the window up top. This bathroom isn't huge, but it is pretty comfortable, uh, but having its own window, very nice. You always want that in the bathroom if you can get it. I just noticed that there was a gecko above the window. He caught it just for a second. I didn't see it while I was standing there. See the view out? That is the utility room directly across and the uh, back of the Jack and Jill matching bedrooms door right there. So let's head across. You can see the living space here from, from there. This is This is just such a big space so much open room you could do so much with this and it's wider at the front so there's kind of an expectation that this is more of a, a grand hallway and you're going to have more of your seating or television or whatever up front and i wanted to show this notice that window up top that is a little bit higher space that is you would almost certainly want to have that open for additional airflow through the middle of the house this house depends on front to back through air with pressure with that extra um, air above to move heat through the house into this big garden in the back. We're gonna go back there, it's pretty nice. Uh, but all of the rooms get their air from the salon in the middle. They don't get it from the outside. So that is an important aspect of how this house is designed and is gonna to lead to maybe air conditioning is gonna make sense. This is the utility space, laundry, cleaning up, all that kind of stuff. Very large, lots of windows on its own. That is the window for the master bedroom in front of us, the salon on the left. Backyard is not huge, but it is ample. You always dry your clothes in the back everywhere in Nicaragua. It's just how things are done. You have nice uh, foliage on the back walls. You have your barbed wire so that people aren't hopping over from the neighbors. Uh, and you have a lot of windows in the back. You're going to want to have the back of this house be as open as possible, but most of that is from public spaces, so it doesn't really pose a problem. And then you can just see the small window there from the master bath. You have more laundry space back here. Very possibly you'll want to take out the square laundry space and just use this more hidden one and turn the other space into more of a uh, patio area, maybe with a table or something, but of course you can do anything you want. Uh, but that is, that is the way I would approach it. Um, I do think it's a pretty nice space. It has a lot of potential. This utility room really is pretty great. It's very open to the house, but it's also very convenient. I think that the master bedroom, the Jack and Jill, the great office space, and this really cool big kitchen with big dining room area are, are kind of the the main pieces here, but this double living room space here with the, the parlor on the left and the, the open room on the right. Nice front patio, nothing to write home about, but it's it's a very uh, good space. Overall, I like this house a lot. Everyone who looked at it was very happy. As always, I hope that that tour of a house here in Nicaragua uh, gave you some great ideas as far as where you could live, what prices would be, what you might be interested in, what areas you might be interested in, and uh, just let your your imagination run wild. If you have any interest in this specific house, I say this every time, we are not real estate agents. We do not get a commission. We are not involved in any way with the sale of these houses. But if you are interested in it, certainly just shoot us an email, info at relocatenicaragua.com and we know the agents who are listing them and we'll just pass you on to them. And remember, I do warn against using agents all the time. That are, Those are buyer's agents. You don't have that option with seller's agents. These are the representatives of the house. So we'll just pass you on to the people who are representing the house and you can work with them directly. Or of course, if you wanted to hire us to handle any legal uh, or negotiations, 
kitchens or a setup or anything like that, that's different. But as far as the house is concerned, we're just uh, using the agents to get access and they let us uh, put them on the show for you. So it's great for us because I think it's a lot of interesting content and uh, they get more exposure and more likely to move a house. So it's a, it's a symbiotic relationship, but we do not get any commission. We're not part of that. If you want to reach out to them directly, absolutely feel free to do so. Uh, they would love to hear from some of you. So that's just our disclaimer. If you'd like to support the show, buying the house does not in any way help the show. I mean, we'd love if you moved into the house. That's pretty cool, but it doesn't help the show directly. If you want to do that, you can buy me a coffee at the link I'll put above, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and makes such a huge difference. We're always getting cameras and lights and different things, partially because I'm addicted to buying cameras and stuff, and that's partially why I do the show, right? I love Nicaragua and I love cameras. Why not put it together and make an excuse to have cameras and walk around Nicaragua like it's kind of a perfect combination but i still need to be able to pay for it all so please buy me a coffee that would be wonderful uh if nothing else make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the show tell people about it take the link post it on the reddits the facebooks uh that new threads thing let people twitter whatever is that still around post these things let people know and uh share with your friends family get down in those comments let us know what you think about the house every little bit of conversation helps tell youtube that we're engaged uh talk to other people give us a thumbs up to other people's conversations answer them say hello if nothing else and i will see all of you tomorrow we're going to be talking tomorrow there are a number of people who have mentioned gentrification we're going to talk about that in tomorrow's episode and if you're watching this this morning, just a quick note, uh, I am actually, at the time that you're watching this, if you're watching it when it first came out, I'm in the car heading to Costa Rica, picking up my wife who's been gone for two months in Southeast Asia, touring around. So I will be driving all day on the 10th, which is the day this releases. That is a lot. We'll talk about gentrification when I see all of you tomorrow.